through books, isn't it? I'm saying, who gave you permission to read? We must read everything. Do you eat everything? You don't eat everything. You are selective. As Muslims, we only eat halal. And now, we don't even want just halal. We want halal, organic, hormone-free. Huh? What else? Pasture-raised, grass-fed. Oh, we're being very, very careful what goes into our body. What about what goes into our heart? Uh, how you get all these uh, healthy foods anyway? Everyone can try to raise their own grass-fed cow, but nobody's really doing that because it's, it's not easy to do, isn't it? So you go to someone who's able to provide it for you. The same thing with knowledge. Don't try to make your own cow. There are people who can provide it for you. They're saying, We have to read. Because the first commandment came to the Holy Prophet, saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ikra. Read. So we have to read. He says, MashaAllah. Really? He says, yes. So many are saying this. So many imams and shaykhs saying this. So we have to read. Because our salvation comes through education. If we are holding on to this education, especially this education system, definitely mm, you're going to become better ones and you're going to take over the whole world and make it to turn to paradise. MashaAllah. What kind of foolish talk is this? Yes more educated people on the face of this earth right now than it was ever before. Isn't it? There's more people knowing how to read and write now than ever before in the history of mankind. But we turn this world into a hell, not a paradise. But that is one of the tricks of Dajjal. He'll present paradise as hell and hell is paradise. So Ikra, this is mashallah. You know how to quote me that. So tell me, when Jibreel salam said to Holy Prophet salam, Ikra, read. Did he come with a book to say to the Prophet, read? Did he come with a magazine? Astaghfirullah. Did he come with an iPhone? Nobody now reads books anyway. They're just reading iPhone, isn't it? Again, it's messing up your mind and your circuits up there. No, we're not going to enter that for right now. Did Jibreel salam say to the Prophet to read from a book that he has under his arm? Huh. And for everyone's information and reminding again, the Holy Prophet said to salam, he did not know how to read or write. He was Ummi. Which means that he did not have to go to anyone else except for Allah. Allah is his teacher. Jibreel salam told the Prophet salam, read. And the Prophet salam, says, I don't know how to read. You think it is what the history books are teaching us? He's saying, read, read from something. He says, oh, I don't know, I'm an Ummi. You think that was what he meant? Then what happened? He hugged him, correct? Passing from his heart to his heart. Read. Three times he hugged him. And he says, now read in the name of your Lord who created you. Read what is here. Read your heart. Read your heart. Read that book. Read that book that if you don't read now, and you put in so many wrong things, you'll be made to read in front of the entire creation on the Day of Judgment. They were going to give you a book, correct, on that day? If they give you a book on your right hand, you feel happy. If they give you a book on your left hand, that is not the book of Quran, that is your book. Then you're in trouble. And Shaykh Andy, they're saying some, they'll be given their books from their backs. 
Now, the only way to get it from their back is to put their hand through their stomach and to take it from the back. May Allah protect us from that. This is real. Tariqat, Sufi. They only know how to quote so many fancy words, fancy phrases, fancy philosophies. Die before you die. They don't have to say die before you die. You're not even dead to the desires that you have at this moment. Are you going to die before you die? What it means now? We are not taking that book to read. Before we die, we're in big trouble. We're not taking that book to read. Our book on these holy days and nights. To take our book of life and to turn the pages we don't read our book and correct it, we'll be in trouble. Berat is coming. Our book for the year is going to be sealed and it's going to be sent. And according to what our intentions and actions are, that is how the pen is going to write the destiny that is coming. So this is not mystical knowledge. This is everywhere. The signs of Allah, it is not mysterious. It is in front of your eyes. But the ones who are blind, they cannot even acknowledge the sun. But the one whose eyes are open, he will not only look at the sun, he will discover the sun in his own room. And he's going to discover his Lord. The ones whose eyes are open, how are you going to open your eyes if your hearts are dead? Oh, comes back to you again. It is not the outside. It is not the outside information. Outside knowledge is knowledge that you have about yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in your heart. It is the knowledge of yourself. It is to know yourself. In the Naqshbandi Tariqat, you open that book every day. You're supposed to. Tafakkur. One hour of meditation, tawakkur, is better than 70 years of voluntary worship. But foolish ones, they are saying, this is boring. This is so basic. We want special secret salawats. That if you recite one salawat, it's like reciting one million lakh in Quran. We want special duas that if you recite, then everything is going to be open for you. So what do you want? Oh, you want magic. You want magic, huh? Who is your role model? Which sahabi? Which tabi'in? Which awliyaullah? That things are open for them because they just discover some secret uh, dua, secret salawats from Google or Yahoo and they suddenly became high station. So who is your role model? If your role model it is the Holy Prophet والسلام, if your role model it is the Sabi Kiram which it should be then understand that the Holy Prophet والسلام, said one hour of meditation it is better than 70 years of worship. And that meditation must make you read your book and understand, improve, ask for forgiveness, have intention and make the actions to become better. That is how. Then that time, Ikra, you are going to read your book. You're going to read your life in the name of Allah. Because you're checking your book and you're saying, did I do this in the name of Allah? It's not just to say, Bismillah, Rahman, Bismillah, 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 also. In our way, we have to say, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, 1,000 times between Fajr and Ishraq. Who is doing that? That is to cover in case we forget to say, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, for the actions that we're doing throughout the day, every day. Checking our book now. What did I do? Why I did that for? For who? 
For what reason? Why I say those words? You're putting yourself under a microscope. You are judging yourself. The way that we're going to be judged on Judgment Day. You are judging yourself today. So you look at your book. Whatever that you're doing for the sake of Allah, you must ask and be sincere. That time, you don't need, you really do not need to know too much. You don't need to read too much because you're reading yourself. <laughs> and you know what? The one who knows himself, he knows his Lord. And if you know your Lord, can any knowledge be hidden from you? It cannot. Knowledge will be given to you when you need it. When you need it, suddenly you know, you know what to do. Because isn't that a sunnah? Isn't that the Holy Prophet ﷺ, that he is a master of all knowledges? The Awliya Allah, in their footsteps, they may not study this knowledge, worldly knowledge, or this kind of other knowledge, or philosophy, or they may not know, they may not study, but they understand and they may ask, and they may say that the one who is an expert at that knowledge, they're going to be tied up completely. They say, I don't know how to respond to this. This person's understanding is way be beyond my own understanding, and I've been studying this for years. So the ayats, the signs of Allah, it is everywhere. For the one who can read, you understand? The one who can read. It is everywhere. The one who can read, you see the ayats of Allah in your hand. And then you're going to take that knowledge and you're going to live that knowledge. These days people don't live the knowledge. Tell me you live your knowledge. You don't live the knowledge that you study in schools. They teach you useless knowledge. Fill it up with so much nonsense. Later you cannot practice it. You cannot do nothing with it. Waste it. Malayani knowledge. Knowledge that does not concern you, that doesn't give benefit to you. Simple. You don't need that time anyone to tell you because you are telling yourself. You are reading yourself and you are being sincere. At that time, if someone says one word to you, immediately you wake up because you understand this one word is like a thousand words because you're looking at yourself every day. And you say, this is true. I need to work on it. So now, knowledge. Knowledge of the Mi'raj. We were there in the khutbah. Hmm? We were speaking so much about the experiences of the Mi'raj that the Holy Prophet ﷺ went through. What are you going to take for yourself? We are going to listen to all these riwayats and hadiths What is the reason? To feel good? To get some buzz maybe, a little bit, then later it passes. Then to go back to our own routine, habit, habitual lifestyle. Ah. What is the Prophet ﷺ? He is a messenger. He is a messenger, not only from Allah to us. He is a messenger from us to Allah. Do you understand? So how much of a relationship are you building with your Prophet? How much of a relationship are you building with the ones that he has left behind as his worries? as his inheritors. You're sending messages to Allah, but you don't have a stamp. You're sending letters to Allah, but you don't know which address. Simple letter that you want to send, a mail that you want to send from here, say, to New Jersey, to just a friend, not a mayor, not a president. If you don't have all the information properly according to the code of the state, they're not going to 
take your letter for nothing. They even throw it to garbage, isn't it? You think that time to send messages to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is lower than this. So easy, you just say, Ya Allah, and yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you call me, if you call me, I will answer. Call like how? The computer can call. A hypocrite can call. A believer calls. A prophet calls. You think all these calls are the same. And you think the response and the reply is going to be the same. The Holy Prophet he is the greatest caller. We are here in Tariqat to understand a little bit more every day, every year, every month, a little bit more about our Prophet through our Shaykh. So that he can be a messenger and the best of messenger between us and Allah. Do you understand? Why people are, oh, why these people, they're only concentrating on their shah. Everything is shah, 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 shah. Just like Wahhabi saying, why these people, they're concentrating on the Prophet. Everything is Prophet, 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 Prophet. Then call to Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a protocol there. Approach me with the best of means. He did not say, approach me anytime you want. In whatever state that you want to approach me, just approach me with the best of the means. What is our responsibility? What is our intention? What do we want? We just want Allah just to answer prayers that we are asking just like people Christmas time they go to sit on Santa Claus and say, I want this and I want this, give this to me. I've been a good boy, I've been a good girl, so you have to give this to me. That is our relationship with Allah Jalawala. Well, those ones, that their relationship is just that. That's how they're going to say. No, 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 nothing in between me and Allah. Because they just want. But for those who wants to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that for them to serve is the most important thing. The paradise and the hellfire, that is Allah's decision. That is not our goal. Our goal, our maqsud is to make Allah happy. If Allah's happiness is going to put us in some rough places, so be it. Who are we now to rebel against that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen to this carefully now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even sent the Holy Prophet والسلام, to Jahannam, didn't he? I sometimes say these things a little bit out of context to see where people's minds are. And immediately they come to me and they say, Oh, how can you speak like that? And we say the Prophet went to Jahannam and that. I said, Look, what happened at the Miraj? He did. Who are we now to rebel against our Lord? The Mi'raj is there to teach us that the Holy Prophet والسلام, it is a messenger between us and Allah and for us to be able to get a safety here and hereafter is to be that one who is serving Allah. We cannot go through the test that the Prophet ﷺ went. Impossible. We will fail. We cannot go through the test that the awliyaullah are going through. We will fail. But we have our own tests ahead of us. Every single one of us. And the test you can only pass if you know the answers. If you study for the answers. You can only pass if you have some discipline 
you didn't study for the whole year, you didn't have any discipline, at least for one night you're going to say, I must have the discipline. Isn't it? A couple of hours, I must have that discipline. You cannot escape. I never heard a person saying, I love the medicine so much, I'm not going to study. I don't need discipline. I just need love. I'm just going to love medicine so much, then the test comes, I'm going to give all the answers, and I'm going to be a doctor. Especially in these days, like I said, so many things are toxic. Love is toxic. You understand? How can it not be? Dajjal is speaking about love 24-7. Isn't it? Look to Hollywood, Bollywood. Everyone is talking about love. Love, ashk, pyar, everything. Songs, never ending always about love. Everything is love. If I said before, if some alien were to just look at popular culture in these days, he would think, without being here in this world, he would think this whole earth is filled with love. This world is paradise, because everyone seems to be singing about it, talking about it, listening about it, making everything about love. But this world is a Jahannam. There is so much tyranny in this world. Awliyaullahs are sick and tired of it, and they are asking Allah either to remove them or to bring Mahdi salam soon, because they cannot live in this world anymore. What kind of love? <laughs> the love if we have to the ones that the Prophet loves is going to bring us so much pain. It's going to bring us so much hurt. Who the Prophet ﷺ, he loved? Who did he love? Say. Who? Leave all of that. As an Ummat in general, who does he love? Huh? Who? The Prophet subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, it is different. We don't enter into that. Who does he love? We're talking about this world. Because we're talking about worldly love now, isn't it? You're not even following where I'm going with this now. When he started his mission, who did he love? The khutbah is mentioning that. He is loving the orphans, the widows, and those who are under tyranny, and they have no right. Correct? Isn't it? He did not come for his family. He did not come for his friends. He did not come but to save the nation, those ones who were oppressed. Isn't it? He loves them. Do we love who he loves? Do we love the orphans and the widows and those ones who are under tyranny? Can we say tyranny ended with the war that ended all wars? World War I. Did we say tyranny ended sometime later in World War II? From World War I until now, every single day there is a battle, there is a conflict, there is a war that is going on in this world from that time until now. Yes, of course, you remove the Khalifa, fire is going to burn this whole world. So it is. The orphans, the widows, those who are under tyranny. Does the Umar love whom the Prophet loves? Say. Don't go too much. We look at ourselves. Do we love? We spoke about this yesterday. Yeah? Somebody told me they just bomb somewhere. Leave all the politics aside. They are bombing children. Which politics, which philosophy, which regime, which ideology says it is okay? None. So it is wrong. Let's leave who is at fault, who did this, who did that. That action now. 
39 Syrian children, they were bombed. Our hearts are turning a little bit, crying a little bit in these holy days and nights. So many Sufis, this is the time where they cut themselves off from all of these things and they just make zikr because they want the blessings and they want to be close to Allah. But they completely miss the point because the Holy Prophet ﷺ, on his miraj, he's calling Ummati, Ummati. In this miraj, who are we calling? Yes, we're calling Nafsi, Nafsi. We are blaming our Nafs. Just as we're going to say on the Day of Judgment. So what is going to be on our lips? What is going to be in our hearts is what's going to be on our lips. So to feel for the Ummat, because Hazrat Mahdi salam, is not going to come for you and me to bring us to higher stations. He's going to come to end this age of tyranny. Are we understanding this age of tyranny? Are we promising Allah every day that in any way, in whatever small way, we're going to end this tyranny? Are we promising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're going to end the tyranny that we make to ourselves and others? This is the month of Rajab. That is part of the dua of Wali Abbas, isn't it? Dua. People reading dua, they're reading mantras. Blah, 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 just hoping to get. They're not looking. They're not trying to understand. I'm not talking about knowing Arabic. Abu Jahil knows better Arabic than any one of you, any one of the scholars today. But no single light of faith entered into his heart because of proudness. And proudness has overtaken this Ummah completely. The dua of Wali Abbas asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all the tyranny that we've done to others, to ourselves, to Allah. That's why Hazrat Rabia Radawiyah is saying, for every astaghfirullah that we are making, we have to make another astaghfirullah because it is done in ghaflat. If you just say astaghfirullah, but you don't understand what, is, what are you asking forgiveness for? What is the mistake that we have done? When did you do it? Why did you do it? What is causing us to do it, to repeat it? What kind of harm is it causing to others? If we don't understand that, if we don't read our book, that astaghfirullah is done in ghaflat. And we in need of another astaghfirullah for that. So everything now, it comes back, 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 back to ourselves. The one who knows himself, he knows his Lord. Inshallah Rahman, in these holy days, we will take this. The Miraj, not just. It's good to sit and to understand and to hear the riwayats and everything else that has happened. But we cannot miss the real teachings and how it's going to benefit us in these days, in these times, today. Otherwise, our religion is just going to become a ritual. It has no bearing on our present mind it has no bearing on our present state. It is not relevant to what is going to happen in the future. You start separating your life and religion. Once you separate your life from religion, once you separate your spirit from your body, you're dead. Dead hearts we have. This is what we are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to understand the secrets of this Miraj to make us to become better servants, to make us to step on our ego, to make us to end the tyranny that we commit to Allah, uh, to others and to ourselves, for all this tyranny to end and for justice to come back. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-Fatiha. For the sake of the Holy Prophet don't be selfish, don't just be praying for yourself. 
Don't just be praying for yourself. Look and feel something. Faith. Faith is when you see something wrong, you correct it with your hands. When you cannot correct it with your hands, you correct it with your tongue. And when you cannot, at least in your heart, you have to say, this is wrong. But that is the lowest level of faith. Two billion Muslims. The richest people in the world are Muslims. The most educated people in this world are Muslims. We have so much, but we have become so little and so shameful. We cannot do anything. We cannot even correct anything with our heart. And that is the lowest level of faith. May Allah forgive us, inshallah, and make us to become stronger. Fatiha.